It is May 2nd and I am in zone 6B. It did not rain at all, hardly at all in April. And so over the weekend though, we got some rain. So I was so happy. We got about four inches of rain. I rely heavily on rainfall to water my gardens. And so I was real happy about this. So I basically just want to show you a little bit of my container garden. So you can compare it to, I think I showed you a video in March. Here is my bay leaf plant and it's doing great but it's such a slow grower <laughs> my nasturtiums are popping up everywhere which is wonderful and then i have some siam queen thai basil probably my favorite thai basil and i started this indoors um, i think it was around in january i have some apple mint and this i divided in march it was becoming quite root bound in the container that it had been in for at least three years i've also planted some seed for dill and chervil and those are coming up slowly i have this lavender thyme here along with lime thyme which i also divided it was becoming root bound so it's got a new home there this is the parsley that i started in my how to grow parsley video and i did that around in january so i just moved it out this is french tarragon which must be started from a cutting you cannot start this from seed some tarragons you can start from seed but French tarragon, which is what you use for the best flavor for cooking, needs to be started from a cutting. I tend to buy one of these every year so I can just space them all throughout my gardens because it's one of my favorite things to use. I've noticed with growing kefir lime trees from seed, they tend to grow straight for about the first two years. You know, I have to bring my trees inside for about six months out of the year. And then on that third year, they start to branch out. So I do notice that this tree is starting to um, grow some little branches on the side, which is great. Here are my chives. I've been using a lot of these. Chives are just wonderful, I think. And this is my cilantro. It's starting to bolt. This was what I planted in March. And then this is some that I planted, I think, around in April. I showed you how I like to succession plant cilantro in my cilantro growing video. And then here is some that I have just sown, I think, last week. So they're not up yet. Here's my Greek oregano. I also divided that. Um, it was becoming root bound in my pot in March. So there is a new home for it and it's doing great. Here are green onions and I plant these much like I do cilantro. I like to plant more of these about every two weeks. So they'll always have a constant supply of scallions and green onions. And then here is some basil. Uh, this is something that I have to watch my weather report very close to see if we're going to get into the very cold temperatures. We're still not really past our last frost date, and so um, I watch the weather report. That is very frost sensitive, and I will have to bring it indoors if it gets cold. I also have to do that for my tomatoes, and th there's some more basil here that I'm starting from seed. I have four other kind of basils that I'm growing, and then I have my peppers here also um, with lemongrass as well. These are all my frost sensitive plants. Um, I've had a pretty bad problem with aphids on my tomato starts and my pepper plants along with some of the cutting flowers that I also started. It took me about a week before I figured out what the problem was. I just had to start looking up underneath the leaves and there were the aphids. So I basically treated all of my tomato plants and pepper plants by rinsing off the aphids and then spraying with spinosad underneath. And um, they are doing great now. I've already moved some out into the garden. This is the green stock vertical growing system that I will do a review for you um, probably at the end of this month um, towards the beginning of June so that you can see how that's working out for me. And this is a Meyer lemon tree doing really nice, just covered up with blooms and it smells so good. I'm really proud of the little Meyer lemon tree this year. Okay, so let's head down and I want to show you my peppers, then we'll go down to the garden. So I've already moved out a lot of my pepper plants into containers. This is my preferred method of growing peppers. I have excellent results growing them in containers. This is one of the plants that overwintered in my garage. It's called a, a mammoth jalapeno pepper plant. And here I'm just pulling off some of the old leaves that were from last year's growth. They have some spots on them. I have found that the plant just naturally fills in with new leaves um, when I bring it back outdoors from having it overwintered in the garage. So I don't prune my pepper plants, but they kind of prune themselves. They'll drop those old leaves and they'll fill in with nice new leaves. So that's um, just helping it along there. And then here are my new pepper plants. I probably have about 12 total, uh, a lot of hot ones. I really like hot peppers. And one thing I'd like to mention too is that if 
the temperatures get freezing or are really cold, I can move all these pepper plants into my garage to have them protected because those two are also frost sensitive. And then here are some of my azaleas that are blooming. They're just beautiful. So let's go down to the garden and I'll show you how things are looking down here. I also have to harvest a few things. So here are the tomato plants that I showed you how I'm planting them this year. And you'll notice here that I have two tomato plants. They are um, planted in opposite corners of this little square and I have a pepper plant on one side and cucumbers on the other. I want to make sure there's plenty of air circulation going through there. So let's head over here to my potato plants. I'm having a little bit of a problem here and I think it's either due to flea beetles or uh, slugs. It's probably both. This looks like flea beetle damage here and then this looks like slug damage. So I'm going to go ahead and treat for both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and spray with the spinosad here. I'm going to do underneath the leaves and on top and then I'll do this again in a few more days just to make sure I get rid of the, all of them. And then the other problem I think I'm having are with slugs. So I'll just go ahead and put out a little bit of slug bait here. Okay now Let's go over to this bed here and I can show you I have succession planted spinach and it's coming up at this point in the season. I have planted spinach three times and I'm going to plant some more tonight. So that'll be four plantings in the last two months. I'm one planting about every two weeks and I explained that to you in my spinach growing video. So in the back of the bed here I have Swiss chard growing and it's doing very well. I started some indoors and then I also planted some with seed. It's grows very well just um, planting it by seed in the soil. It survives very nice in um, the cooler temperatures and in the hotter temperatures and I found that it has very few insect problems. Swiss chard is related to the beet. It's kind of like a beet green but it doesn't produce the beet root. Okay so wonderful little green there to grow. And then right here I have my French tarragon in the front and like I said, I'm always planting that somewhere. I always like to have it around. So here are my strawberries. They're not producing berries yet, but I expect to see some soon. And my onions are coming up nicely. Here are my sugar snap peas. I already showed you how to grow sugar snap peas. If you didn't check out that video, I'll leave a link for you here. And then in the back of the bed, I have some cilantro, which overwintered. And it is um, starting to bolt. But no worries, because I already have a lot more growing throughout my container garden. And actually in this garden, too. And I'll show you that. Here is the dill. And mixed in with that are also some cilantro plants. All of these reseeded from last year and I like to kind of keep this bed weeded. It's real easy to pull weeds after a good rain so that's usually when I tend to get down to the garden and try to get weeds out. So I don't mulch this bed because I do let all of my herbs reseed over here so you won't find mulch in this bed. Now here are some collard greens and they are going to seed very nicely here. I should have more seed than I could possibly use. <laughs> so the blooms have fallen off and now there's little pods coming out behind it and those will grow. I'm going to keep it watered until they fill in and then I'll have some nice seed. So on the very tips here are some aphids and these have actually moved over from another plant that I had in the garden that had a lot of aphids on it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of monitor these collard greens here. I want to make sure this aphid infestation doesn't get out of hand. I do want to leave a little bit here to attract some of the beneficial insects to the garden. Now I don't recommend that if you're a new gardener that you do this and you leave aphids in your garden. But um, the one thing that I do like about this is that it has already been attracting a lot of what are called aphidious wasp and ladybugs. And so I'd like to see those beneficial insects in my garden and they will come. If there are aphids there, you will most likely see them in your garden. But at the same time, you don't want the aphids to get out of hand in the garden. And I don't want to start attracting ants and a lot of other things. So I'm going to keep my eye on this. Over here is my little herb garden, and I have a lot of arugula I need to use. I, I really need to harvest that right now. It's getting a little bit big. And then we'll head over here to the little canopy. I have really enjoyed this little canopy this year. It lets in a lot of sunlight, and the rain falls through the canopy, but it keeps the bugs out. So let's go ahead and take a look in here, and I'm going to harvest some of these turnip greens, which are very fast growers. And I told you before that I'm growing seven top turnips, and this is what you will grow for turnip greens. Of course, you can use the greens when you grow 
actual turnips, the turnip root, but um, just like Swiss chard is uh, related to the beet, this is a plant that you grow for just the turnip green and not the turnip root. So it's very nice, mild turnip green, and I highly recommend it, especially if you live in the south and you like turnip greens. Give seven top turnips a try. Most likely, if you visit a nice southern restaurant and you order turnip greens, you're going to be getting seven top turnip greens and not the greens that are produced from growing a turnip. I also had to make an adjustment as to how I was securing down the canopy, and I just put, took some little hooks and secured them at each corner. They were flying up a little bit, so that solved that problem. Now here in this corner, I have some Chinese cabbage, and this is not the kind that forms a head. I'm going to make some Chinese coleslaw with this, with some rice vinegar, a little sugar, some soy sauce, just something really simple with some hot chili and some cilantro and a little green onion. I think that'll be real nice. So over here, I have some spinach. And I need to go ahead and harvest this. This was what I told you I was sowing in early March. This was probably about the first week in March that I planted these seeds. And I explained in my How to Grow Spinach video that you can just succession plant this about every two weeks, which is what I've been doing. And my carrots are coming up great. I sowed those seeds in March as well. And then right here is my Greek oregano plant. It's doing very nice. And I will dry this this year. This is the second year for this plant. And you always want to dry your herbs before they flower. So I'd also like to invite you to head over to my channel where you can click on the little G plus up there in the corner. That will take you over to my Google Plus page where you can click on collections. And there... If for more gardening tips, you can click on Garden Tips, and I have a lot of other things over there that I'd like to share with you. So thanks so much for watching, and have a beautiful day.